Welcome to Projects for All. This is my rigid combo spindle and belt sander. I've owned it for a little less than a year, so for me this is still a relatively new tool. But I've used it a bunch of times and I'm not convinced it was the right tool for me. So it might not be the right tool for you, or it might be perfect, but we're going to discuss that in more detail. We're going to go around the tool, let's see what we got going on, all the accessories, all its functions, and how it works. And then we'll talk about what it does and how it does it and if it's going to be the right $260 purchase for you. So we'll start on the front. There's a lot of places to put all the included accessories, which is actually pretty helpful. If you're going to have this in a shop environment, it's great. If you're going to put it on a truck, it's going to be bouncing around. I don't know how well this will work for you. Although the table does flip down on the front, so that might hold some of it in. Starting on this side, you get your spindle sander drum. Place to put the drums. You can just leave the sandpaper on them. They all fit right there. You get two inch, inch and a half, one inch, three quarter, and there is no little rubber thick insert for the half inch because the spindle is half inch. So this will fit right on the spindle. You get throat plates for when you're using the spindle sander, four different sizes. You get washers, this half inch inner diameter goes on the bottom of the spindle when you're using the half inch spindle only. The rest of them are for the top, for the nut, and I'll show you that in a minute. You get a couple holes here, you can put your Allen keys, at least that's what I do with it. These are mounting holes, there's ones in the back here. They have small ones for drywall screws, and they have holes for bolts. You get your power switch on, off, just like all of them. The yellow is a key, which is incredibly hard to pull out. So if you have small kids at home or an orange cat you don't trust, you can lock down the tool. It just clicks right back in. So on the right side, you have your adjustment for the table angle. You have a way to adjust this, and it's back here. I'll show you in a second. You have a carry handle, but all that's really going on here is this knob. You have detents for different angles, obviously, and you have this piece of spring steel right here that rides in these detents and stops at your selected angle. But it's a little bit of a loose fit. You get a rounded top on this piece of spring steel, and you get a sharp edge in the detent, and it works nice. It stops to where you can tighten down the knob and it feels nice to use, but you get a little bit of a loose fit in the detent and you're probably going to want to put something on the tabletop to measure if it's flat, if it's straight, and if it's at the angle you want, unless you're just being fast and it doesn't really matter and then this really works fine. You just tighten down this knob, it's got like a nice rubber coating on it and it feels pretty good. It does feel like quality. Here's how your spring steel mounts to the, the body of this. Just two screws, Phillips head, they're slotted so you can move the spring steel back and forth and move that, move that detent so you can get a calibration out of it. But like I said, it fits kind of loose so I don't know how really helpful that is, but it's there. Not a ton going on in the back. And because I have the belt installed in the tool, my table insert for when I use spindles and put the insert in here just fits right in the back. So at least I have a place to put that. If you're gonna use the spindles, you have a place to put your belt drive. Whole belt drive comes off, fits right back here. It's secure enough. Like I said, if it's in a shop, it's gonna be fine back here. If it's in a van banging around, I don't know how well that would work out for you. It has a two and a half inch dust port I use the same adapter from my Delta table saw. You've seen this adapter a few times if you watched any of my videos. And that brings me out to four inch and I can use my regular old dust collector. There's holes here, drywall screws for mounting holes and bolts. On the left side of the tool, we have nothing going on at all. You got a carry handle, which works really nice because the motor is right here and you get the center of gravity back here. And it's really easy to pick up from the front or the back with this handle. You have no knob to tighten this down on this side. And that's one of my sticking points with this tool because there isn't a way to tighten this down and you get some flex out of the table on the left side because 
all it is is just sitting here on this. The body, the tool, is like, eh, it's maybe a step above Rubbermaid container. It's fine. It works just fine. Let's talk about what we got going on right in here. You got these little tabs here, and they are the contact points for your throat plate. And these little threaded studs, little threaded Allen head screws, and you can raise and lower this thing. You got your dust port, two and a half inches on the back, and just this little slot here, but it works fairly well. You got your spindle, obviously, and mine's got a little bit of play in it. I don't know if that affects its use or not. This little fan fits on top of this spindle, and you got some roll pins here on the bottom that fit into the grooves here. And then the top of the belt drive fits in here. So you got this plastic piece that is actually the drive shaft, if you will, for your belt drive system. So that fits down on there like that. And then you got these four lugs that fit into these four spaces here. And that's what drives this. So mine doesn't show any wear after six months to a year. But it's still plastic, and it is the main driver for this whole belt drive, so it's something to consider. On the belt drive itself, it's got this plastic piece right here, this big tab. It fits down in this plastic piece right here, which feels like cheap plastic. So you got plastic and plastic are your contact points for this, and it hasn't shown me any problems yet, but... I'm not going to lie, I don't have a ton of confidence in it. This plate right here is adjusted. You loosen these two Allen screws and they include a key for it. And you can move this in and out and that changes the angle of the belt drive so you can square it to your miter slot. Mine's square. I haven't had to do that. It was good out of the box. Tabletop. You got these machine grooves and I don't understand why companies like this do this goofy stuff. It seems like extra expense for no reason. Fine, you want your rigid name in there. It's machined in, great. But it just catches dust and adds expense. And it's a spindle sander, so how fancy do you need a spindle sander to look? It does have an actual three quarter inch miter slot. It's not a T-slot, nothing locks into it, but you can slide a miter gauge accessory through this, which is better than we can say for the cobalt rubber table. So props to Rigid for giving us an actual useful miter slide. We got our one inch sanding drum. This is 80 grit. This is one of the ones that came with it. It comes with a full set, one for every size, little sanding drums. They're all 80 grit and it comes with an 80 grit belt. You get all that with the tool. So we got our rubber piece, we put that on, we put our sanding drum over it, we install our throat plate, or whatever you call that, this would probably be the throat plate. You throw that on there, you get the appropriate size, there's different sizes, and we get our appropriate size washer, we put it on, we got this nut which is reverse threaded. It shows you right here. Righty loosey, lefty tighty. I had to think about that. And you tighten it down and that's it. The washer will squish down on the rubber piece inside and keep this nice and tight. And then we can plug our tool in. To switch to the belt drive, loosen, pull that off, washer, lefty tidy. It's got a captive washer on this handle, and there you go. You get a, I don't know what you'd call this, stop block. There's a little tab, metal tab, fits in a groove on the back side here behind the belt. You just put it in, comes with its own little hand screw. 
and you just line it up and make sure it's not touching the belt drive. So you get an adjustment for your belt on this side. This knob here, positive or clockwise is up, negative or counterclockwise is down, and that is moving the belt up and down on the spindle. So I'll turn it on and I'll show you, and I'll turn it to the positive, and if you watch the edge of this belt, it'll raise up. So you can center this or adjust it. If you go too far negative, the belt will go pretty far down and you can actually hear it hit the inside of the tool. Removing the belt is really easy. You take this lever and flip it over, you can push this in. You just pull the belt right off. Slap a new belt on there. Get it kind of centered. And when you turn it on, whatever you have this set for, it'll move the belt right back where it was. I should note though, when you adjust this, if you turn it, you really go like a quarter turn at a time because it takes a second or two for it to translate into movement on the belt. So. If you're getting crazy with that, the belt's gonna go flying in one direction or the other. I checked the belt. We're good there. I even checked this little stopper against the belt and you can adjust it, it moves all over the place. So you can just loosen it and then tighten it down wherever you want. As long as it's not gonna contact the belt over here, you're okay. So I have it all set up. It takes just a minute to do it. And I still struggle if I'm gonna chamfer say the little edge of a block or of a piece, say 45 degrees, I struggle to get a straight chamfer on these little pieces. And let me just turn it on and I'll show you. It seems really random. I put the same pressure. I don't press hard. You know, I let the tool do the work. This is 80 grit sandpaper. It's gonna take a lot off anyway. I try and hold it still. I try and hold it flat on the table, flat on this piece. And I try not to move it around and I still get cockeyed chamfers on everything. That one turned out pretty good. It seems to be kind of random and I've struggled using this because of it. So I have the belt off and you can see, maybe from me just pushing on this table while I was doing that last demonstration, but I'm no longer square. I checked it for square with the belt on it. So maybe that's part of it, but now with the belt off, no longer square. I'll show you what happens when that oscillates and let me loosen it and I'll pull the table Yeah, see, look at that. That's just me flexing the table. The table's tight. I'll loosen it, adjust it, that's square. Tighten this knob down on the side as tight as it will go. I'm gonna let go of the table. And we're square, but if I put my hand on the table, and I put some pressure down on the end of this table, like I'm using the tool and I'm just resting my wrist on it, it flexes and you lose your square. And I think a lot of that is because there's only one knob on one side and it doesn't hold the table square. So that's tabletop totally tightened down. 
That's all the flex you get out of it. So I don't think you'll ever achieve square if you're really trying to get precise, if you're resting your hands on this table and using this tool, because it's just as messed up as it was before I had tried to adjust it. Let's turn it on. We'll be careful with this, it's gonna spin, but we'll turn it on. You can see as it oscillates how square it stays. to pitch out it pitches this way at the top when it hits the bottom but honestly considering it oscillates for a 250 dollar tool it stays pretty square i'll turn the dust collector on and you can see how much dust i create switch to this side so you could see the dust coming off of this thing as I was pushing it here you could see that trail of dust that wraps around and literally look at how much dust this creates almost nothing with a decent dust collector the dust mitigation on this is pretty amazing actually I think I wish my table saws were just as good and it does a nice job and it does it straight and you don't want to be pushing hard you know you just let the tool do the work i said this isn't the right sander for me and i may be wrong but the spindle part works awesome it really does work exactly the way it ought to i have nothing to say about that my issue is with the belt drive and this is really what I bought this for. I needed a belt sander and I thought, hey, I can get the combo tool. I have the spindle sander also. Two in one, less space in this garage. Space is at a premium. And you always make concessions when you do that. This belt drive is only really about nine inches flat surface from one end to the other. And if you're gonna take something long and try and run it across here, I end up putting sandy marks and high low spots in it and it's i really struggle to get something like this if you're trying to get saw marks off it's not the best for that and that's really what i bought it for the spindle i don't need it's something i bought and i'm trying to think of projects in my head and things i could use this for because i own it and i thought hey man i could make a gun stock for an inexpensive bolt action rifle i own that the rifle, the action part is stainless steel, looks awesome, but the stock is super cheap plastic. And I paid almost nothing for it. It's really awesome, but I figured that'd be a fun project and I could probably do a lot of my shaping with this. And I'm probably right. And we might make a video about that one of these days, just for fun. But this, I'm like a hobbyist. I'm trying to think of uses for the spindle. Uh, the belt sander, I have a use like every project, and it's been not so great. So if you need a belt sander, like a good, long, straight belt sander, this probably isn't your best choice. You might want to get a belt sander and maybe a small spindle sander like the Triton, or I think there's a couple other ones that make a small one that's just the spindle sander. That might be a better choice, and it might have been a better choice for me, but... I don't know. This is the one I got. This is the one I'm using and showing you. And it's a very nice tool. I like it a lot. It does most of what it says it does. And it seems pretty well built, except for some of the plastic stuff. The nice thing is though, the drive part, the little drive shaft fan plastic part comes off. And I'm sure you could buy one from Rigid. I'd have to call them to find out. Thank you for watching my video. We're going to do some more table saw videos soon, so hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see those. We're going to compare the Delta with the Rigid, and that's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing which one really comes out ahead. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you in the next one.